everyone, welcome to OKC Zoo at two. My name is Jordan and I'm a marine mammal trainer here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. Wait, is this thing on? Can everyone hear me? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. loud and clear. <laughs> Glad you can hear me. Well, with that being said, I'm gonna pass this off. And we're gonna welcome out one of our resident sea lions. Xander. Hi, Xander. <laughs> Xander is a male California sea lion and he is 16 years old. He weighs at around 500 pounds right now, and he's eating about 24 pounds of fish a day. Wait, sorry, how many pounds? 24. 24 pounds a day, okay. Yes. Awesome. And do you notice anything special about his mouth? What about those teeth? They're black. Oh, I know, Xander. Now that's weird, right? Because our teeth are white. For California sea lions, that's actually very healthy. They're born with white teeth, but they don't have the enamel coating on their teeth like we do. And as they age, there's a bacteria in their saliva that actually coats their teeth and protects them from getting cavities. So the blacker the teeth, the healthier they are. Look at those pearly blacks. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have seven sea lions here under our care, and three of them are rescues. And Xander's one of those rescues. So when, when Xander was just a couple of days old, he was found abandoned, and he actually still had... Oh, I know, buddy, it's sad. Oh. It's okay, though, because now you're here with us. He was actually abandoned, and he still had his umbilical cord attached. So after a couple of days of observation, he was rescued, taken in, and he was actually deemed non-releasable by the U.S. government. And now he lives here with us. So zoos and aquariums are a great way Zoos and aquariums are a great way to rehome animals that can no longer survive in the wild by themselves. So now Xander serves as an ambassador for his wild counterpart. And he's actually the father of two other sea lions here under our care, Cash and Phoenix. So Jordan, we've got a lot of uh, viewers that are just kind of tuning in right now. Okay. Could you just uh, one more time introduce yourself and where we are? I'm Jordan. I'm a marine mammal caretaker here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. Right. And who is our uh, animal ambassador guest? I think he just... <laughs> yeah, Xander just went home. Um, but that was Xander. Again, he's a male California sea lion. He's at about 500 pounds right now, so he's a pretty big boy. Um, but like I said previously, he's actually the father of two of our resident sea lions. Cash and Phoenix, and the mother of those two animals is actually Pearl, who is another one of our rescues. So Phoenix is going to come out here in just a little bit, um, but one of the questions that we received earlier today was, what does our daily routine look like? So as a caretaker, my job is obviously to take care of the animals. So I come in, almost every day my team comes in, and we look through the fish. So we make the diets, and if there are any breaks in the body cavities, any fish that looks bad, we don't feed that to our animals because we don't want to feed it to our animals. That's no good. So they get restaurant quality fish. They actually eat better than I do, but that's fine. Ah, oh, Phoenix! Welcome out! This is Phoenix. As I said, she was born here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. Her parents are Pearl and Xander, as you saw Xander earlier. <coughs> Something to say to you. What is it, Phoenix? Welcome to OKC Zoo at two. Aww. What a nice of you. Thanks, Phoenix. <laughs> well, as Phoenix is talking, you may notice that some of her teeth are kind of turning that black color. So she's still young enough where her teeth aren't completely black yet, but that's okay because every day we do give our animals daily physical exams. So we make sure that her teeth are nice and healthy until they do get that black coating. Sorry, Jordan, one of our viewers is asking, how old is Phoenix? Phoenix is three years old. Three years old. And can you talk about the importance of training with, with Phoenix and all the zoos sure. and marine, marine mammals? So one of my jobs as an animal caretaker is to keep my animals stimulated. So through training, some behaviors are mentally stimulating because they require our animals to think through complex problems. 
so from a young age, our animals are actually taught to touch their nose to a target, which looks like this. Right here, they touch their nose to that, and so we blow our whistle. The eggs, target. There we go. Now you might have heard that whistle and you might be wondering what that is. That's our way of communicating to our animals that they've done exactly what we're looking for. And we sometimes pair that whistle with that restaurant quality fish. And then with, our, with time, animals are taught to follow the target or to target different parts of their body, which is the foundation of all the behaviors you'll see today as you tune in with us. So we got to look at uh, Phoenix's whiskers just a second ago. Yeah. What's the purpose of the vibrissae for them? Yes, so those whiskers are very important. They're actually called vibrissae. Um, and basically what they're used for is hunting. It's to sense vibrations in the water. Oh, okay. Phoenix wants to show off really quick, so I'm going to interrupt myself. Oh, okay. You ready? It's all you, Phoenix. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I said that's one high flying sea lion. There. <laughs> <laughs> but those vipers are very important because sea lions sometimes actually have to dive really deep in the water to find their prey. And in some of those depths, the light level is very low, or it might be the dirt might be uh, thrown up a little bit and so they can't see. So they can actually flare those vibrissae out and feel the vibrations in the water. So if prey comes by, they can reach out and snatch it. Or if there's a predator near them, they might be able to feel the vibrations as well and so they can escape. Nervous. Oh, <laughs> predators, scary. So we had a viewer ask, um, with the colder weather today, is that bothering them in the pool? No, um, so California sea lions are actually found up and down the west coast. They can be found in Mexico and then all the way up into Canada. So the colder weathers are actually completely natural for them and it doesn't harm them in any way. So they're doing just fine. And we actually keep our pools um, warm. They're about, what is it, 70, 70 okay. degrees? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. There she goes. We have a really great question from Erin. She would like to know, how do sea lions sleep? How do sea lions sleep? Um, so sea lions will actually come out of the water. Um, so whenever we come in in the morning, Phoenix, Cash, and Isla, who we call the littles because they're our, the youngest members of our family, um, will normally be up on the dock or up on the ledge. And they'll actually tuck their flippers in, pull kind of their back flippers in like this, and they'll sleep on their side. It's pretty cute. <laughs> And I think a really common question we get are, do sea lions have hair? They do, yeah. So she's actually covered in hair. You can't really tell when she's wet uh, because it makes that dark brown color. But when she dries out, she'll actually turn this golden brown color. It's really pretty. Um, and she'll get a little fluffy too. You had mentioned Isla earlier, and um, prior to going live, we had asked some questions of our Instagram followers, one of which was, how is Isla doing? Isla's doing great. Um, she, well, as far as it seems, is enjoying her time here in our family. Um, she actually just learned a completely new behavior, her tumble behavior, was trained by one of our trainers, Sierra. Um, so she's continuing to grow and interact with our family just fine. Phoenix is very happy to have her here, to have a sister around her age. And do they play a lot together? Yes. Yes, they interact really well. Um, yesterday for enrichment, I actually gave them jello, and I threw the jello chunks in. And Phoenix will eat the jello, but I likes to kind of just rip it apart and throw it away everywhere, and then go find it and throw it somewhere. So, yeah, she seems to really enjoy her time here. There are those pearly browns. As I said, her teeth are still turning black, so they might look dirty, but I promise you that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> and one more time, Jordan, could you tell everybody who Phoenix's parents are? Yes, Phoenix's parents, Pearl is her mother and Xander is her father. Xander is out here previously, um, and they are both rescues. And how old do sea can sea lions get? So in the wild, the average life expectancy for them is about mid-teens. Um, but under human care, they can live to be like 20s or even early 30s. So due to our amazing medical care, um, with the food that we can feed them, they don't have predators, they don't have to worry about pollution um, and other dangers out in the wild, they live a lot longer here normally. All right, and so these guys have been swimming in the back. Do you mind introducing our viewers to sure. them? so these are our two resident harbor seals. Big Spee is right here, and then in the water is Liberty. <laughs> 
And how old are Bixby and Liberty? Bixby is seven and Liberty is 17. I think a lot of people confuse sea lions and seals. Can you talk about the differences between the two? Sure, so this is gonna be a really quick explanation. Um, but if you're looking at a, a pinniped or a seal or sea lion on the beach and you're wondering which one is which, if you look at the sides of the seal's head, you won't notice any ears. You'll actually notice holes in the sides of their head. Those are their ears. They have internal ear flaps. And then if you look at their front flippers, they do have those claws. Those are to help paw out on ice floes or on rocks. And then seals actually will use their hind flippers to propel themselves through the water by whipping them from side to side. Whereas a sea lion will use its front flippers to pull itself through the water and they actually kind of look like they're flying. One of the questions we received from our Instagram viewers is how is Liberty doing after her eye surgery? Liberty seems to be recovering just fine. So if you notice in her eye, she does have that cloudiness above that is a scar from her cataract removal surgery, but she can actually see a lot better than before. Um, and she doesn't seem to be experiencing any pain or discomfort due to her surgery. So I would say that she's healing just fine. Our vets check on her all the time just to make sure that nothing's you know coming back or that scarring isn't developing more or anything like that. So I'd say that she's in full recovery. <laughs> A really great question we received from Pam is, she asked, do you think they miss audiences and guests for their performances and their presentations? I think so. Um, our animals can definitely tell, obviously, when people aren't here, um, when they don't do those shows. And we have animals here that seem to really enjoy our shows. They seem to really enjoy wild encounters, intera interacting with our guests and interacting with us in those shows. Um, they really love the high energy behaviors, like Xander. Xander is a member of our family who does the fun segment a lot, and since he's not able to do that, I think he does miss it. Um, whenever we come out here, we try and really do a lot of those fun behaviors or those high energy behaviors with him because he does seem to genuinely enjoy them. So I would say that they do miss you guys. <laughs> Last question we received from our Instagram viewers is how much joy do these guys bring to you like they do everyone else? I mean, for me, <laughs> I chose this job for a reason. I love my animals. Um, I come to work every day and I love it. And honestly, I don't feel like a lot of people can say that about their jobs. No offense to everybody out there, but I love what I do. So the joy that these animals bring me, I can't even describe. Um, I'm extremely lucky to have this job and to be able to work with these animals every day. And I hope that soon you guys can come back and ex experience that joy with me. Okay, now, did, I see we just brought out a special treat. Yes. Some enrichment. Yep. All right, what do we have there? Well, if you can read it, it says OKC Zoo in 2. We'll go up for a little close-up here. And it's got some fish on it. So this is a feeder toy. You guys can get closer if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and basically, it challenges our animals to have to hunt for their food. Um, in the wild, they would have to hunt every day to find their food. Here, we're able to feed it to them, but we still want them to have that hunting behavior um, <laughs> under our care. It's very important for us to us for them to display natural behaviors and like hunting. There it goes. And the liver, you got it all. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Jordan, thank you for hosting. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> we hope everyone has, has a wonderful day. Tomorrow we're going live in our Big Rivers building with our awesome native fish to Oklahoma. So we hope you'll join us. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Jordan. Yep. Bye, guys.